Well, hey everyone, I'm Matt Mosler, the pastor of New Life Church here in Pine Bluff. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys here at NLC Live. Our uh, subject for today comes out of the book of Proverbs. It's Proverbs 21.5 and it says this, Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Now I'm going to really struggle to try to keep this to five minutes or less, so I'm going to talk fast, so take quick notes. Uh, I'm really passionate about this because I've seen what poverty can do to God's people. Let me tell you what happened. A couple of years ago, my wife and I moved from central Arkansas down here to Pine Bluff to plant a church. Now, at one time, Pine Bluff was a very prosperous community. I mean, it was the capital of the Delta. People from all over the Delta would come to Pine Bluff because we had entertaining. We had theaters. We had great restaurants. We had wonderful shopping. Well, now if you look through the landscape of our area, we have lots of dollar stores. We have lots of rent, lots of rent to owns and lots of fast food. We here in Pine Bluff have successfully made the transition from prosperity down to poverty, but our economic salvation is on the way. Why? Because we're getting a casino. Woohoo! <laughs> Hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Now, let me tell you why I think um, work ethic is so important to God and, and why the enemy is working so hard to destroy our work ethic. And the first reason is that work was commanded by God. Look, God created the Garden of Eden and it was perfect. When he created the Garden of Eden and everything is perfect, why didn't God put Adam and Eve in the middle of that garden and say, look guys, I made all this for you. Have fun. Enjoy it. Party on. But he didn't do that. What he said in Genesis 21 or 2.15 was that the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden and he said, tend it and, uh, and watch over it. He said, go to work, take care of my garden, and name all these critters. Work was a command by God, uh, and, and we may not always understand God's commands, but we have to obey Him, because God can see around the corner. He knows He's got a purpose and a plan behind everything that He does, and it was God's plan that we go to work. Fellas, God gave us a job before He gave us a woman. It was a command by God to go to work. Now, why? Because work teaches us humility. I mean, think about it. If, if God did for us and catered to us, then it would all be about us. And anytime we make anything about us, we're on the wrong track. We were created for him. So we are commanded by God to take care of everything that he has given to us. And this teaches us that, that God is the provider, that he loves us and he wants us to enjoy his provision, um, but to always point our praise and our gratitude to him not to us. And just as Adam was commanded to take care of the garden that God created, we too today are commanded to take care of our homes, even if we rent them. We're to take care of our city and to pour back into our culture, to pick up trash and volunteer in the community. We're commanded to take care of our families. That's, that's work. Work teaches us gratitude and humility. But the third thing that work does is that it teaches us uh, our purpose. You know, I mean, right after God creates Adam and Eve, he tells them to be fruitful and multiply, to fill the earth and subdue it. Now, this does not just mean to go and have babies, because God gave the same command to Jacob. And he said, Jacob, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. But when he told that to Jacob, the brother already had 12 kids. He wasn't telling him to go make more babies. He was telling him to fill the earth. And that word fill in the original language means to complete, to make full, or to finish the work. It's like seeing a glass that's half full and filling it up all the way to the top. God created this world, but he left it unfinished. And he wants us to assume our role in completing the work. I mean, this gives us purpose, man. We got a job to do. But it also breeds self-esteem. I mean, God made this amazing world, this beautiful place, and then he handed it over to us and he says... I want you to finish the work. I mean, he, he's going to trust me to finish this glorious work that he started. Man, it's kind of like watching your dad when you were a kid in the garage working on the car, and then he hands you the wrench, he says, tighten that bolt, and then when you're done, he says, look what we did. He, God wants you to be a part of what he's created, and that breeds self-esteem, man. I mean, we all have a role to play in the world that God created. We need to be productive. We need to better our world. We need to beautify our surroundings so that we can expand our influence and point more people to the Creator because we work as unto the Lord. There is no shortcut to the life that God created you to live. I mean, you're not going to find purpose in a lottery or in a casino or in any get-rich-quick scheme. It's only through work 
in planning that we find our purpose and that we find our self-esteem and our humility before God who loves us. Because good planning and hard work is what leads to prosperity. And those hasty shortcuts will always, will always lead to poverty. God bless you.